New York, London, Paris, Milan. And now, Fashion Week has come to Dubai. I'm Dan Murphy, and on this edition of CNBC On Assignment, we go access all areas at Arab Fashion Week 2022. Arab Fashion Week launched back in 2015 with an agenda of just 12 shows. Today, it's a massive event with 35 runway shows set across an entire week. It's all set in this pop-up building in Dubai's design district, and I'm going to give you a guided tour. Well, it might look pretty chaotic, but everything here is incredibly well organized. This is where the models come to have their hair done before each show. And over here is where they sit to have their makeup looks created, which these artists aim to complete in under 15 minutes. Out here, each designer is given a workspace where they can make final adjustments to their collections and dress the models before each show. Once they're ready, final preparations are made here before these models take to the runway. And this is where the magic happens. Fashion editors, buyers, influencers and VIPs watch the shows to spot the trends of the future. Arab Fashion Week takes place four times a year, marking spring, summer and autumn winter in both women's and men's wear. This week is women's ready to wear spring, summer 2023. And it's not just Arab designers showing here. Fashion houses from around the world are presenting their latest collections. The entire event is run by the Arab Fashion Council. I caught up with its founder and CEO, Jacob Abrian. Jacob, it's great to see you. So tell me about the origins of the Arab Fashion Council. How did all of this begin? It's a very beautiful story because I, I was in my 20s when I was modeling in Milan, where I had the chance to meet in Paris, in Milan, in London, and New York, um, so many designers coming from the Arab world. And uh, I, I told myself, why don't we have this? Why all our designers and why, including me, we have to all travel abroad in order to become successful? And um, I started to work on the business business plan, business model, the Arab Fashion Council represents the 22 Arab countries because I believe that um, one Arab country on their own can't, can't build a fashion ecosystem. For example, Egypt is one of the biggest countries historically for producing the best quality cotton. Then Tunisia is for the silk and for amazing um, fabric that even French brands are importing fabric from Tunisia. Where um, the, the Levant countries like Lebanon, um, Jordan, Syria, Palestine, they are, um, they, they are under the cluster of manufacturing. And after you bring the textile from North Africa, you can manufacture and produce everything on those countries. And then um, Dubai as, um, as, a, as a fashion hub and the fashion capital for the entire region is responsible for the marketing, for the export, and for um, hosting a platform like the Arab Fashion Week. Um, so yeah, so that's how it all started. And um, I, I met at that time with, uh, with most of the ambassadors of the Arab world in Italy and um, very uh, beautiful. They all have supported Dubai and they all said that Dubai should be the host city uh, due to, to the peace, to the safety, to the pr proper infrastructure, um, that Dubai is ready to host something on that international level. How have you seen Fashion Week change over the years? I saw already a huge change in terms of, uh, of, of how the Fashion Week is seen and perceived. I see it growing in terms of uh, numbers of days, numbers of designers, a number of bookings, and we can even host more. We have so many designers on standby, they are waiting to present their collections in March. But we see that we are able to even host 70 shows every season, which is very achievable in the very near future. And the number of bookings um, has, has climbed from 3,000 bookings in 2016 until today we are at 30,000 bookings, which is, which is massive. It's hosting 30,000 people um, every season and we are four times a year. This means we could reach easily 100,000 people coming to Dubai in order to experience the Fashion Week, to present their collections, flying to Dubai in order to meet designers, discover what's going to be on the shelves next year and put the, the orders for the, for the retail industry. 
Um, this is extremely an economical machine that generates revenue in terms of creative economy. And um, that's probably the main vision and the main aim of the Fashion Week itself. What's also interesting from a business perspective is that a lot of the large luxury fashion houses see the Middle East market as critical for their business. But Jacob, how would you describe the state of the fashion industry in the Arab world versus the rest of the world? Is this still a maturing market in your view? The Middle East market is really important because of the consumption power and the, and the purchase power which we have. Um, although I have seen since, uh, since we came to the region um, a massive change in terms of the consumer behavior. These days they, um, they care less about the brand name and they care more about the story, about the designer, about how this collection has been created, what is the inspiration, um, is it sustainable or not. How do you see the future for the Arab Fashion Council developing and the future of Arab Fashion Week? What's in store? So basically we are currently known as one of the big five fashion weeks globally. We want to be the five stars fashion week where designers do not um, struggle with the logistics behind preparing their show. Um, behind just running uh, for the production, for the lights, for the sound system. This is all thrown on us because we want designers to just focus on creativity and come to Dubai, um, to the Fashion Week, as if they are coming for tourism and enjoy what Dubai has to offer. As well as staging, hairstyling and makeup is provided for the designers' models walking the runway. This not only supports fashion houses, but provides growth opportunities for businesses too. Backstage, I spoke with Jonathan Lantuan from the makeup brand Kiko Milano. So Kiko Milano has been the official makeup partner of Arab Fashion Week for three years in a row now. And uh, you know, uh, beauty and fashion go uh, hand to hand. So Kiko Milano is the number one brand in Italy. And uh, we offer such a vast array of aesthetic and possibilities and combination and look that it's the, per the perfect match for uh, Arab Fashion Week and uh, Kiko Milano. Let's talk about the business impact of all of this as well. Why is it important for Kiko Milano to be involved in Arab Fashion Week and does it ultimately translate into higher sales volumes for you? So more than sales, it translates into the brand DNA. Uh, for us, it's very important to offer premium quality product and it's very important for the customer to know that the product that they, uh, they apply daily uh, on them is actually used by professional on fashion show as well. Kiko Milano is a growing brand, so what's the opportunity for you in the MENA market? So globally, the brand is doing very well. Uh, we're growing double digit in the market, which is a real market of focus for the brand. We're even growing triple digit. Uh, so in the MENA region now, we're present in 12 countries, more than 70 stores, and it keeps growing. And what other impacts do you think social media has had on the makeup industry generally coming out of COVID? Trends are going much, much faster now. <laughs> so first, you have way more trends than before. And um, a trend spreads the world in a, in a matter of, uh, of minutes or seconds. Uh, and that's the beauty of, uh, of social media. So a trend can initiate this morning in Hong Kong and already be in Dubai at noon and will be tonight in, uh, in New York. So the, the, the power of social media is how we can uh, connect and create trends all around the world. Everyone coming with its own background to, uh, to bring their own personal touch and our own personal touch from the Middle East. Uh, but then we're able to express it in front of the entire world. Still ahead, why the Arab Fashion Council is partnering with the organizers of Paris Fashion Week. It brings credibility, it brings, you know, uh, an anchor, a strong arm, and for them to recognize this region in terms of a fashion capital. Welcome back to CNBC On Assignment and to Arab Fashion Week, where I'm backstage as designers prepare to showcase their latest collections. Among the collections being shown here this week is designer Jean-Louis Sabaji's collaboration with iconic doll Barbie. A significant partnership for a Middle Eastern fashion house, which follows in the footsteps of labels including Moschino, Versace and Balmain. Another important collaboration putting Arab Fashion Week on the map is between the Arab Fashion Council and the organization behind Paris Fashion Week, Fédération de la Haute Couture et de la Mode, which has seen an Arab designer, Mrs. Keeper, show in Paris and a French designer show here in Dubai. Mohamed Akra is Chief Strategy Officer at the Arab Fashion Council. 
The partnership with the Federation that operates Paris Fashion Week started in uh, June 2020. And the, the French organization saw the, the success and the growing market here in the Middle East. So this is why they were more willing to send out more brands to Arab Fashion Week. And they see our platform as, you know, as a part of the big five, as a part of them. And it was something really great. And when you have that type of synergy and collaboration between Paris and Dubai, for example, what does it ultimately bring to the region in your view? It brings credibility. After all, Paris is over 100 years in terms of uh, their fashion week. So uh, it brings credibility. It brings, you know, uh, an anchor, a strong arm. And for them to recognize this region in terms of a fashion capital. The French designer was Victor Wayne Santo, who showcased the latest collection from his Wayne Santo brand. And I met him backstage ahead of the show. It's actually the French Federation, which is uh, in collaboration, uh, working uh, with our fashion council. And uh, they invited me and proposed me to uh, present my work here. And it's an honor because I think Paris and Dubai are so different, but so similar in the same time. In, and the meaning of it for young designers is really important. And why do you think it's important for an event like this to be held in Dubai? Because Dubai is now a, a center of the world too. So. I think it's really exciting uh, that uh, fashion is becoming even more bigger here in this country and uh, I'm really excited to be part of it. So walk me through your design and the inspiration behind it that you are presenting at our Fashion Week here. This season is really a manifest about love, friendship and creativity. I wanted something fun, joyful, colourful, also something a bit more pure than the previous seasons. And yeah, always excited to showcase here in Dubai. You're designing clothes, but you're also running a business. Does an event like this also translate into sales for you? Yes, uh, we do sell, and it's really important to, uh, to showcase our collections during shows because it helps for the sales, for the shops, and uh, hopefully it will be even bigger. Fashion Week is also an opportunity for designers to learn and upscale their businesses and brands. Alongside Instagram's parent company, Meta, the Arab Fashion Council hosted the She Creates event, which aims to highlight the work of female entrepreneurs, leaders and advocates. Joanna Jamil is Meta's strategic partner manager for the Middle East, North Africa and Turkey. So what exactly is She Creates? Okay, so She Creates is a Meta-led uh, female initiative to empower women in the Middle East and North Africa. She Creates started as a way for us to tap into the diversity and the inclusion programs and for us to empower women in the region. This year, She Creates, it was an on-ground event. We had panels with really powerful, uh, impactful women from the region to come in and talk on uh, around the various topics such as fighting for your voice and uh, women and empowerment. Social media now plays a really critical role in the world of fashion. What is that role and how important is it in your view? Fashion is a community and it starts from the designers to the creators to the models and the list goes to photographers, the behind the scene, the backstage, the list goes on and it's endless. Instagram and Facebook has been this place since the beginning of it all for the fashion community to come in and collaborate and partner and be seen and be heard. And Joanna, explain to me how Meta is working with creatives. Our job consists of working with content creators into ensuring that they are thriving on the platform, they're, they're, they are growing, they're, we're helping them with their objectives. And, and, and when it comes specifically to designers, when it comes specifically to fashion talents, we work really closely with them into ensuring that they are utilizing our latest uh, products and formats, may it be on Instagram or on Facebook, to grow, to engage, to collaborate. We're in a very physical space now, right here alongside the runway at our Fashion Week. Of course, Meta is investing to build the Metaverse. Do you think the future of fashion is going to be digital? The future of fashion can definitely be digital. There's a lot of features, a lot of products that has been released or they are beginning to work on them for them to be released. So I would always suggest for this, for the fashion community and for, for the, the talents within that community to keep an eye for what's going to happen next and to take a step forward to tap into this uh, digital world that we're about to, to, let's say, open the doors to. With high-profile brands including Nike and Gucci already selling digital fashion as NFTs to be worn in the metaverse, 
The trend is seemingly on the minds of many designers here this week, including Ilse Yara from Paraguay. Now you're getting ready to take your collection to the stage. What are you actually showcasing tonight? I'm showcasing a summer collection and uh, well, I have worked in this conceptual thing that is related to ethereal movement. Uh, my previous collection was connected to birds of Paraguay. I always try to connect with a purpose and it, they're connected to endangered birds from my country. So we use all the, pa the color palettes of this and also connected the textures of the feathers, but in a very different way. We're also hearing more and more about the metaverse. Do you think the metaverse is going to be the future of fashion? Well, I believe it's going to be part of it, but I don't believe it's going to be a 100% future of it because, you know, we are human beings that we need to get together. We need to, to connect with people. So I believe the metaverse is a tool. Uh, it's a tool also to maybe immerse people to the, the, the view of the designer, to connect with the product maybe. But in my opinion, I believe it, the, like the connection people to people, even in retail, is going to keep going. What about the rise of NFTs? How is this impacting the industry and your brand in particular? Right now, I'm still not working with NFT, but I'm really wishing to do it because uh, I believe also it's a way to, to people to connect with these clothes, to, to grow with this, and many people can have like the same dresses or make exclusive dresses. So I believe it's a, a whole new world that I'm really wishing to explore. Uh, in my experience, what I worked was uh, previously with Samsung, so we created a whole collection that was made with 3D, and I believe that like NFT is like a step after that, so I'm really excited about NFTs. Ilse Yara is not the only designer looking to digital to expand their business. Fern One launched Amato Couture in 2002, and today it's one of the UAE's most established brands. Fern, you launched here in Dubai 20 years ago. How has the market changed in those past two decades? It's uh, totally different, uh, especially before there's no social media. So we're doing mostly in, uh, our clients are mostly here in this uh, area, but now it's more global. We have lots of clients from this region, the Middle East and the Gulf, and also from Russia and uh, Europe. It's, it's, uh, it's the international market. How would you say social media has changed the fashion world? We hear a lot about the rise of influencers, for example. Has that impacted your brand? This tool is very important to showcase your, your designs. It's an easiest form, it's the easiest way to, to showcase your, your brand. Do you think it's had a positive impact on the industry overall? Everything has positive and negative, of course. What's the negative, would you say? Uh, overexposure, I think. <laughs> And what's the positive? Um, more mileage. Amato Couture has recently announced a collection of dresses to be sold exclusively as part of a digital auction. The plan for the brand is to go more global and international, and we have to have uh, like um, online. Uh, you can buy our clothes online because we don't have that. But I think that's the market, you know. So walk me through the collection this year. What are you presenting? The title of the collection is uh, Birds of Prey. Uh, the inspiration is all about birds. Uh, the full collection is all black. It's full of texture, uh, full of embellishment, but I did it in a different way. I mix fabric, I mix... So it's more on the texturizing of the dress. It's more modern. It's like a mix of streetwear and couture. Coming up, we meet a first-time designer trying to make a difference. Oh my god, I'm, I'm so excited and happy. Like It's my first fashion show ever. I need this platform so I can reach out to as many people as I can. Welcome back to CNBC On Assignment and to Arab Fashion Week in Dubai, where it's almost showtime and the white carpet is out for the audience of buyers, stylists, influencers, and celebrities from the Middle East and beyond. 
But it's not all about the spectacle of the runway shows. Fashion Week is big business, and the designers here are looking to secure significant deals. Melania Ronchi is the Arab Fashion Council's Buyers Relation Manager. First of all, explain to me your role at the Arab Fashion Council. What is it that you do? I'm here because on one side, I would like to suggest to the young designer that is growing up how they can meet uh, the needs of the different market to develop their business because there are a lot of talented designers that is raising up on the scene but sometimes they are creative so they don't know how to meet the needs of the market to transform their collection into an established brand so I'm here to support them on one side and on the other side to um, invite the international buyers and to know uh, the Design Fashion Week. So how do you connect these designers with an addressable market in the region? I try to suggest them how, which kind of small adjustment they can have to do sometimes to their dresses uh, to fit the needs, maybe also the cultural needs of some market. Of course, fashion is uh, an international language but you need to fit the different culture and the needs of the market to be relevant for the buyers. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in the market right now? Where is the money being spent and why? In this moment, people is looking for something really exclusive and unique. So I think that here we have a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of beautiful dresses, a lot of stories to be told. So I think that there are a lot of newness and this is something really relevant, especially for buyers that are used to place their order for big designers, but they need to refresh the offer for the final consumer. So I think that to be here and to discover new designer is something really interesting for their job and to grow their business. One new designer looking to do just that is Tarek Abru Samra, founder and creative director of sustainable brand Atelier Forge. I caught up with Tarek moments before his first ever show. So Tarek, we're right outside Arab Fashion Week. Your show starts in just a few minutes time. How are you feeling? Oh my God, I'm, I'm so excited and happy. Like uh, it's my first fashion show ever and uh, I'm the very first uh, Syrian fashion designer to, to uh, showcase my second collection uh, with Arab Fashion Week. An incredible opportunity for you, not just to showcase your collection, but also to build your brand and your business. So how are you doing that exactly here? Right, actually, uh, my business is still startup. My, my fashion brand is still new and it's my little baby. <laughs> um, I'm the director, uh, uh, creative director and uh, founder of Atelier Forger. It's a new sustainably driven fashion brand. It's timeless, minimalist, modern, and also made of organic materials. All the fabric made of organic cotton. Tarek, tell me about the business opportunity though. How important is this event for you when it comes to actually doing deals, finding markets, and finding buyers for your clothing? Definitely. You know, like I'm still new designer, so I need this platform so I can reach out to as many people as I can. Also, it's a great opportunity to get in touch with the buyers and so I can get my, my brand to the next level. Have you found a market here? Um, obviously, yes. <laughs> I'm so glad to, to say this. Um, yeah, it's going well. <laughs> and you're, so you're making sales? Uh, yeah, I'm so satisfied. I'm still startup, so nobody knows about the, my brand, but I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to take it to a uh, global stage. How do you see yourself evolving over the next five to ten years? I have a very clear vision about my brand. Uh, I know like, uh, the fashion industry is the second polluting industry in the world. So I'm trying to make a change in the fashion world by producing elegant, uh, beautiful, sustainable and eco-friendly clothes to every, to every woman. And Tarek, I know you're very busy, so I'll let you get back inside so you can get ready for your show. Thank you so much. Finally, it's showtime for Tarek and his brand. And it's goodbye from us. That's all for this edition of CNBC On Assignment. I'm Dan Murphy at Arab Fashion Week in Dubai. Thanks for watching.